I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to talk about wild muscadine species. Uh, muscadine grape is a grape, so it's in the Vetus genus. Uh, the Vetus genus has two subgenera. The major subgenera is the Uvitus, which has 38 chromosomes and has your common grape species such as Vetus vinifera, which are your wine grapes, and Vetus labrusca, which is your Concord type grapes, and then several dozen other wild grape species. The other subgenera has just three species. It's the Muscadinia subgenera, and it only has Vetus rotundifolia, which is our muscadine grape that we're normally eating uh, and which most of our cultivars are based on. Vetus monsoniana, which is a wild grape muscadine species found primarily in Florida. And Vetus popanoi, which is a wild uh, muscadinia species found in Central America. So what you're looking at here is a typical wild uh, muscadine Vetus rotundifolia grape. Uh, typically they'll be black in color like this. They'll have relatively large berry size and um, relatively few berries per cluster, usually less than 12 berries per cluster. And they have size easily when they're ripe. And they typically will have a tough hull and then a soft kind of slimy pulp. So the difference between, the major difference between the Uvitis grapes and the Muscadinia um, subgenera is the Uvitis subgenera has 38 chromosomes and the Muscadinia subgenera have 30, uh, 40 chromosomes. The, because those numbers are different, when you cross the two, you typically have 39 chromosomes in your hybrids. And because that's an odd number, uh, your hybrids will usually be sterile. And it's only with great difficulty that you can cross the two subgenera and pull in traits from one side to the other side. Uh, Vetus rotundifolia is found throughout the southeast. Uh, it starts in and around southern Maryland, and then it goes down around the Gulf Coast through east Texas. Usually it's quite common within its native range. Uh, oftentimes as you go and drive along the highways, you'll see rotundifolia growing up in the pine trees and along the fence lines uh, throughout the range. This is Vetus rotundifolia. This is a wild selection which was made into a cultivar. This is the cultivar Thomas, which was found in the mid-1800s in the coastal plain in North Carolina. And what's quite a popular cultivar for many years. Has a, kind of a purple berry, relatively good flavor, and was used early on in breeding many of our more popular cultivars today. Uh, this is pretty typical growth of Vetus rotundifolia. Here's a third accession of wild Vetus rotundifolia. Uh, you can see again here, these berries are a little more black, a little more shiny. The vines maybe not as, as happy as the other two, uh, but pretty typical of what you'll find in, in wild Vetus rotundifolia. What we're looking at here is the second uh, Muscadinia species. This is Vetus monsoniana. Vetus monsoniana is native primarily to south and mid Florida but you can also find it in the lower Gulf Coast. So it kind of hugs the coastline around the Gulf Coast. I'm in Tifton, Georgia, which is southern Georgia, and we do see some Vetus monsoniana out in the forest here. And so it does go at least that far north, but you probably wouldn't find it much in, in mid-Georgia or any further north than that. Vetus monsoniana is distinguished from Vetus rotundifolia primarily by two traits, and that is the size of the berries, the berries will be less than 1.2 centimeters large, and by the number of berries per cluster, generally more than 12 berries per cluster. So if you compare Thomas here to the Vetus monsoniana, you can see the Thomas berries much larger than the monsoniana, and fewer berries on the Thomas cluster than on the monsoniana. I went around this vine and collected several clusters and counted them, and usually there were 20 to 30 berries on each cluster. Uh, Monsoniana is, grows a little bit different than the rotundifolia. It tends to be a more rampant grower. It starts to break buds sooner in the springtime. And it usually typically will grow right up through the fall until it gets frosted. Since it's um, more suited to the mid and south Florida, it's not used to getting much cold weather. And so it doesn't really shut down in the fall. If you look over here, these are some other wild Monsoniana. And you can see this is September 1st, still quite rampant growth uh, and no sign of the vines slowing down. 
Uh, despite the fact that it grows until it gets frosted, we have not had much problem with cold damage on the Monsoniana. Uh, but if you went up to in the more northern latitudes like North Carolina, you might have some problem with cold damage there. Monsoniana has been used a bit in breeding of our modern muscadine cultivars. Uh, you'll find it in the background of a couple different cultivars. Uh, prominently, it's found in the background of noble muscadine. And one of the reasons for that is uh, because it has a more stable juice pigment profile than does rotundifolia. Uh, the Monsoniana oftentimes has more malvidin. Uh, and malvidin is a redder pigment and a more stable pigment than the delphinidin, which is typically found in the rotundifolia. So it's been used a little bit in juice uh, cultivar production. We're using it a little bit in our breeding program. Uh, the two things we're kind of looking at are again uh, to get better stable uh, pigments in some juice cultivars. And we're also looking at it to bring in vigor into our vine. Some of our newest selections really don't have the vigor I'd like and so I'm crossing uh, the Monsoniana in there to get a little more variability and hopefully bring up the vigor in the crosses. So that's our second cultivar, Vetus Monsoniana. We're looking at here the third species of the Muscadinia. This is Vetus popinoi. Uh, don't quote me on the pronunciation, I'm not sure I've got it right. Uh, but this species is found in Central America, so it's found in Southern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and that type of area. Uh, again, it's, it's a tropical vine, uh, so it tends to grow throughout the year until it gets frosted. But again, like the Monsoniana, I've not seen cold hardiness on, or cold hardiness problems on this vine yet. Uh, the fruit looks a little bit more like Rontodinifolia than does Monsoniana. Uh, you can see it here in comparison to the Thomas. Uh, the color of the skin looks very similar between the two. Size is similar. The lenticels on this Popinoy are more prominent than they are on the Rotundifolia. I've only got this one accession of Popinoy, and so I'm not sure how much variation there is within the species if you were to um, isolate several different ones of it. Uh, in terms of quality, uh, the biggest thing you'll notice about the quality is the skin much thicker and it's much seedier. So you can see there, it's got a soft pulp which comes out. And then you can see the skin here, it's very thick, almost rubbery. Uh, and the flavor is not good at all. It, it's very tough to um, stomach these, especially if you chew the skin at all. It just kind of has an off flavor that's not, 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 not nice. The leaves, you look at the leaves, tend to be a little bit longer, uh, more chordate than are the um, rotundifolia leaves. The vines, it's still, uh, this is September 1st, it's still actively growing vines. You can see a few flower clusters on it, some developing fruit, so it's kind of perennially flowering and fruiting. But even with that continual growth, the vine growth isn't rampant the way Monsoniana was. Uh, so it must be a little bit slower in its actual growth. Uh, we're using it a little bit in our breeding program. Uh, it tends to flower sooner than rotundifolia. Uh, it's usually a full two weeks earlier beginning flowering than is rotundifolia. And that's primarily because it's breaking buds sooner than rotundifolia. And so we're trying to cross it in, trying to get that earlier bloom date uh, with the hopes of maybe getting an earlier harvest date and getting some really early harvest muscadines that would be coming off the vine in July. Uh, so that's the hope right now. Uh, we're also using it a little bit for trying to produce some juice tights because again, it, like Monsoniana, has more malvidin content and may have a little bit redder and more stable juice color than is typical of the rotundifolia. So those are the two major traits we're trying to bring into it. So again, that's our three wild species of the Muscadinia. Vetus rotundifolia, our Muscadine grape. Vetus monsoniana, which is found in Florida. And Vetus popinoi, which is found in Central America.